Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode of ETC or etc or slash uh, European team lead community or engineering manager team lead community. Well, it's just a second uh, episode, so we are not sure who we are, but we, we will manage it uh, eventually. So today we're going to talk about uh, different topics and main topic is how to manage the managers, how to teach them how to swim and other interesting um, uh, ideas. So, and today we have, we have uh, outstanding uh, guests, but before we begin, first of all, our meetup group is meetup, uh, is bit.ly, sorry, uh, slash etc meetup. Then you can join our Slack group. Uh, it's uh, not that user-friendly link, but we will work on that. And uh, probably we can begin. And last thing, last technical thing, please don't hesitate and uh, post everything that you like or don't like or any questions or thoughts in, in the chat and we will talk with you. And I believe this is the best uh, option, best um, uh, time to ask your questions because we have a really outstanding guest and let me let me show you who is the guest today let's begin from uh michael uh, michael kuyalovic uh, senior engineering manager at atlassian hi michael hi hi everyone uh, good to see you Evgeny. great to be here today nice nice our uh, second guest is uh, pavel gerasimov uh, from a company called raik so hi, Pavel. And Pavel is, uh, sorry, engineering manager at Rike. Yeah, I kind of am. Uh, hi, Evgeny. Hi, folks. It's uh, great to see you all together. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll have some fun now. And the last, but of course not least, the uh, mm, best company in the world, uh, like one of the best companies in the world, um, including Rike, Atlassian, and uh, of course, Muse. Uh, Marianne uh, from, from Muse, VP of Engineering. Hi, Marianne. Hey, welcome you all. Hi, hi, hi. And uh, so I think we are ready to discuss this uh, complicated topic, but uh, probably we should begin from a short introduction from you and uh, probably um, some info about your company, about your position about uh, who you are actually and let's start here yeah, the same order from Michal. yeah uh, so as um as evgeny mentioned i'm Michal kuyawovich i am senior engineering manager at atlassian uh, currently working in the poland office in gdansk um, and yeah i'm on on everyday basis i take care of the um, data center products so the products that are being hosted by our um, customers, like like Jira, like Jira Service Management, um, uh, I think the topic is very close to my heart. Um, in my previous company, I've been driving some programs for it, and have been pretty passionate about growing leaders. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks, uh, Michal. And uh, yeah, this topic is probably one of the. Uh, on one hand, most painful for managers, how to adapt other managers and, you know, like a swarm spread management across the organization. So, yeah. And uh, Pavel, could you please continue about your experience and, and what is right? Because uh, probably, I don't know, maybe someone doesn't know about right. Yeah, that would be interesting. Uh, sure, I could. So, yeah, uh, hi, guys. My name is Pavel. Uh, I'm working in, uh, as an engineering manager in Rike. Rike is a, a service for collaboration and uh, work management, uh, project management, and whatever. So, basically, a really flexible and great platform to uh, enable you to do everything with your projects. Uh, Rike is a part of Citrix. So, 
uh, like my job in Rike, uh, I'm working as a, a manager for a dedicated product unit. Uh, we are developing a solution for like Rike for professional services and IT teams and trying to help them to resolve uh, their uh, like needs uh, in this vertical solutions. So in my unit, I have uh, two teams, uh, like regular scrum teams, and uh, that's mostly what I am be able to talk about, uh, about how I uh, manage guys in those teams, uh, how I, or about my past experience being like just a functional manager, manager in this setup and working with a, uh, functional leads in these teams. Uh, and uh, probably how we uh, went this transition and, and scaling in Reich. So that's probably it. <laughs> Thanks, Pavel. Yeah. And uh, again, last button, but we will change the order eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so Marian, it's 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 your turn. So what do you do in uh, Muse, and what is? Yeah, also, uh, yeah. Thank you for 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 the intro here. So basically, uh, I think everybody knows Muse. Uh, just just to uh, repeat that, uh, we do the cloud solution for the property management systems, meaning like you know, uh, ensuring that the uh, let's say end to end uh, use case coverage for the hotel properties, hotel owners, etc. Um, basically, we uh, we are spread across the globe. Uh, what we have we are handling currently two and a half uh, uh, thousand different uh, properties of hotels and hotel chains. Uh, you might know some of them, such as such a uh, core, etc. And then uh, uh, you know, currently we are at about uh, I would say uh, three hundred fifty people. Where uh, actually like. Uh, Roughly 120 is in tech, and we want to grow like to almost 200 uh, in, in this year. That turns to, I would say, 35 uh, teams uh, till end of this year. So that's basically the story. And speaking about me, uh, so once again, um, my position is VP of Product Engineering, uh, making sure that you know we are delivering the right feature uh, with the right scope uh, and the right quality. <laughs> that that's all I can say. Handling handling like dozen of different teams, basically. Yeah, and um, so let's begin our discussion. And by the way, chat, dear viewers, again, if you are live, if you are here, if you're with us, you can post uh, post your favorite emoji. What's so? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about uh, what is your mood today? You can post everything, anything. So, um, uh, so there are a couple of questions in the chat, but still, uh, let's begin from one controversial topic. Like, what do you think from your experience? Um, I, at least uh, in my opinion, we see that, of course, uh, companies hiring managers, and we see how companies hiring managers from outside and kind of hiring them from inside. But um, what do you think about this idea is that uh, companies prefer to uh, find uh, level zero managers like a team leads or engineering managers uh, level zero inside the company and grow people from there uh, and not to hire them from the outside market. Would you agree with that? Yeah, so if I, may, yeah, if I may start about it, so, uh, you know, uh, currently, exactly as I was saying, like, you know, we have a we have a real situation, which is about, you know, uh, spinning off uh, 15 uh, additional teams uh, this year. So the way how we approach it is that we really create a balance or a mixture of both of the types, which is like hiring from uh, or let's say promoting people, potential people and successful, you know, <laughs> reach uh, from inside. With the combination from uh, let's say external people from outside so uh, we are not like you know limiting ourselves and uh, restricting the way that you know we can't hire or let's say the uh, external uh, leaders better to say right and uh, i regard that to be the best approach because uh, let's be honest if you just promote people from inside uh, you end up getting biased by by various things that are already in place and you don't uh, let's say evolve things as uh, quickly as possible because the people from outside can come up with uh, sometimes better ideas that are uh, existing in, inside of the, uh, you know, of the ecosystem. Yeah. Um, yeah, Pavel, what yeah. do you think about it? 
Yeah, if I don't know, well, yeah, I actually uh, agree here. I guess we are in the same situation, so we experience mm -hmm. a huge scaling. I, I even don't know how many people, like uh, the, around one, uh, 100 people this, this year. So we're really trying to uh, get some uh, people from inside. Uh, and mainly, I guess the main idea behind it is that uh, it, it's a good scale the culture because, like, why do you need managers? Uh, you need managers to scale the work, not to do work, but to uh, scale your organization and uh, scale your culture as well. So, uh, having people from inside, it's a really great hit in, into this goal. But uh, also, from another hand, uh, I agree. Uh, we, we had several cases when we heard uh, like this. Zero, zero level of all from outside, and it was a great uh, in terms of diversity and so of diverse thinking, new, new fresh ideas. Uh, like how, like maybe what is even more important uh, as uh, hires uh, such folks for more senior level uh, of management, uh, just to make sure that, like uh, those guys from outside uh, they can provide uh, more and. Uh, better ideas, better thinking, and uh, better experience uh, that they have already had in their personal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Michal, would you like to, um, to join? Yeah, I, I think I don't have anything uh, big to add. I think balance is the, is the right thing. Maybe one, one thought that comes into my mind is uh, when you get into a more stable situation, you should be al uh, already looking for people with potential continuously, right? Even if you don't have and need at the minute in time, uh, look for potential inside the organization, um, grow this potential because probably soon you're going to need it. And I think that's that was the one one of the things that we, we learned um, just to be prepared for a future moves. And we have, uh, yeah, thanks for, for your activity in the chat. So people are from uh, Czech Republic, from, from Ukraine, from uh well it's a big question i don't know what kind of country it is it's it's a quest latvia yeah, yeah so sorry <laughs> for that i'm not um uh, geographically educated so wow there is someone from uh, from canary island that's that's far away so and there is a, one question probably a little bit connected to to our topic but still it's interesting uh, to know about yourself so nikita is asking so i'm mostly interested how you guys become engineering managers sure you went there from senior engineers so like is it is it always true like sure you you went there from senior engineers or it's not always true and people in engin as engineering managers should come from engineering only, or or it's not true. What is your story and what is your opinion? Um, I, I think I'm live example. It's it's half true. I'm I I came from the QA background, so uh, quality has been my uh, uh, close to my heart from the very beginning. Uh, but then I think um, uh, addressing the question, like probably most of people are senior engineers because they have a background that will help them um, to start on their engineering uh, manager's um, journey. Um, I think the, the crucial bit that worked in my case was proactivity. I was proactive and um, trying to do more and trying to change things around. And I think when you start showing this kind of potential of and eagerness to change, it will be noticed. And um people like that are are, are needed and and um, someone will probably notice it and give you an opportunity mm -hmm. uh marian what so like for the potential candidates uh, are you looking do you have uh, something in your uh position description you should have uh, engineering background to be a engineering manager or it's not like that well, I would say it depends. There, there is always, you know, having some sort of uh, engineering background uh, to a certain extent is helpful all the time, of course. But uh, we also have some of the exceptions that, you know, that's really not necessary, like uh, to 200 percent. What I mean to say is that there is a general rule that everybody knows, uh, which is like you shouldn't be promoting the most senior engineer for, from 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 your group to the team lead. Uh, but uh, uh, coming back to, to to the to the question, which uh, which uh, was highlighted here. I, I was gonna say uh, the biggest threat to be, or you know, uh, 
uh, gap to be promoted, uh, let's say, to, to a leader is, is yourself. What I mean to say is that I, uh, you know, survived that period of time where, where you know, me going from, from a developer to a team lead to principal architect, and all of a sudden you have to go to some sort of more managerial position. And it's like, you know, you have to drop all the things that you, you know, educated yourself in and expanded your knowledge for, let's say, 10 to 15 years and say goodbye to it. And it's really painful, right? So you need to make the right decision, uh, whether you are going, uh, you know, in the leadership track or in the, let's say, tech guru track, because I burned myself the way that, you know, I was hoping to, let's say, uh, serve both cases, but uh, that was really exhaustive. So uh, that's for me the definitive lesson learned that, you know, you need to make that sort of radical decision and to be uh, fully 100% compliant with that. <laughs> so uh, to, to, to have your internal peace, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pavel, yeah. So sorry for some lagging. <laughs> it's it's internet. It's twenty twenty two. I mean, like, it 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 can be. So what is your? I know that you come from uh, from engineers yourself. Uh, uh, and... Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, I hope uh, there's not so much lagging now. <laughs> so. It's uh, okay. Yeah, I started actually as a front-end developer and I have worked at front-end, I don't know, for seven, eight years, something like that. Then I came to break uh, as a front-end guy. Uh, and uh, after a couple, like one year, maybe one and a half, I switched to Scrum Master role, then a front-end team lead role, uh, then a front-end functional manager. And now here I am a cross-functional engineering manager. So that was my way, uh, like, um, I, I second what guys said about productivity and all these things. Uh, I guess other ch challenges in my career, like, uh, for example, I had my own startup project. It was an unbelievable experience. It, it helped me a lot, really. And uh, the main challenge, uh, Nikita, answering to your question, uh, I guess for me it was uh, to switch from this uh, just door mindset to a uh, uh, scalar mindset because as a developer your job is just to do things in a greatest quality as a manager your job is just uh, a scale things so that like your team can do more and uh, it was the main challenge for me i guess mm -hmm. yeah um and... sorry uh, covering maybe a, a bit on challenges i think uh th there are two that i see most commonly uh when it comes to new team needs one is the mm, like very often the, the lack of having like a direct impact, direct work that you are doing, right? You're influencing through others. So that's where uh, like new managers struggle and that's where they need um, confirmation from their managers that they're on the right track and they are doing the right work. I think that's, you know, that's uh, my main, main thing that uh, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marian, you are muted, unfortunately. Yeah, it, it's yeah, 2022. Really yeah, thank you. I really do double under that. Uh, as, as Michael was saying, like, uh, you know, uh, the way how I call it is like, uh, we are, uh, as engineers, we used to be perfectionist and we got the dose of sugar, the satisfaction very quickly as soon as you close your pull, pull request, as soon as you finish the coding. But being the leader, that means something totally different. You invest in, in mid to long term. And hopefully, like some fruition comes back to you, and that takes uh, might be taking ages. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I wanted to add to 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 uh, Michal's comment is that uh, uh, I, I would say uh, the biggest struggle uh, going down the, the the manager's path is uh, what I see is to um, uh, basically give up on being the best, and instead you should you should start delegating things and growing others. And that's sometimes like the most difficult because you you think that you are the one who should uh, you know uh, ensure that the whole team works correctly, that you deliver everything, etc. But in, but in fact, you are uh, putting your team down to hell because you don't allow other other people to grow. So mm -hmm. you know the principle of delegation. That's a great thing to to have in mind. And uh, if you have some uh, reasonable, let's say. Uh, manager of yours, uh, direct manager, or some some mentor who's uh, sort of advising you to go on this path, then that that's really like that makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah, 
And it, it's actually uh, kind of nicely segueing us to the topic of the discussion. So just imagine, yeah, being a manager is completely different from being an engineer or any other position. And people people are not born with these skills. And they, for example, for many years, they, they were uh, engineers with one skill set and one mind, mindset. And then they, they cannot be a good managers just like uh, with a snap of a finger, right? So how to solve this? Because there are plenty of skills that, uh, first of all, what kind of skills you think the most um, different or differentiate manager from individual contributor? And uh, next big question is how to develop them because it's not something that you you just get it uh, with your position. You change the job title and bam, you have all the skills. So we can speak a little bit about the main skills slash mindsets slash what's the biggest difference? Oh, please. <laughs> For me? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, a bit confusing. Sorry, guys. So, yeah, sure, I, I can start. So, like, in, in terms of skills, uh, I don't know. It's it's really complicated. Recently, like, my mentor uh, discovered for me, uh, like, this book for you improvement. For you improvement, maybe you've seen it, and it's uh, there are listed like one hundred uh, over one hundred skills, and like all of the skills are essential for a manager manager position, right? Uh, so it's um, maybe not completely uh, honest to mention something in particular. Uh, so I, I would say for me, what, what is important for me uh, between my managers, uh, I guess it's a mindset, like I, I, I will say that's a certain time scaling, but not doing as Marianne, you mentioned about delegation, about uh, all the things. And uh, also uh, about, uh, again, uh, manager uh, should be a person who is responsible for uh, not, not just for daily operations. Uh, they are responsible for uh, tactical and strategical level, right? So uh, they should be the person. Like every every single team deserves uh, uh, to have a person, uh, their leaders, their managers, uh, who is in this strategic position, in this tactical position, and take care of future things. Uh, and once a manager, uh, like jump back to operations and uh, like to get this dopamine by just completing some simple tasks uh, it uh, will like just uh, the, the whole team will fail so uh, i guess that's the two main things uh, out of mindset uh, i'm trying to uh, develop in my mentors but sure there are like really a lot of others and guys maybe you can add something else <laughs> Yeah, I see that Marian is un unmuted, so maybe you, yeah. Marian, would like to yeah. continue. Yeah, thank you, guys. Uh, well, well, speaking of the of the skill set, uh, to me, uh, that's of course like the number one is communication, uh, which is which is like like really different. But th there's no surprise, like you, you know, making sure that you communicate correctly and uh, you can raise your hand in case of everything anything goes doesn't go well or. Uh, contrary goes goes well, and uh, there is a level of satisfaction. Then, uh, uh, and then being able to praise people that that's that's really like for sure, making sure that things are working. Uh, the the one of the things, for example, that that I uh, look forward when I hire uh, or you know promote somebody for the team lead position is that, uh, and that's to me like the uh, uh, one of the metrics basically and the indicators that things are going well. And that's the I call it a synergy between the team lead and the product manager, because that's the like the most important thing you can you can obtain. If you create that synergy, then uh, the team is like uh, working pretty effectively and uh, happily ever after. And that's that that to me once again is like the ultimate goal, right? And the and the the I would say the caviar on top. Uh, I'm adding that that's one of uh, you know the I would say the values and or the mindset. Uh, things uh, which which uh, I'm looking deeply for and that's the transparency what I mean by, by transparency is that you know uh, you don't uh, make any politics you don't intrigue uh, you say how things are uh, you raise your hand 
um, and uh, you you make things like around you highly transparent, so everybody knows why your team is working on certain things, why you have made certain decisions, and so on and so forth. So if you are able to create this level of transparency, and again, a, a good manager is able to you know give you this sort of environment, then uh, then uh, you are basically on a on a safe bet. Uh, that that's my let's say experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. I think, like, if I if I, I can add on top of that, uh, I agree with with Pavel in terms of the the um, the horizon of skills that you might need as a lead, team lead is very very broad because very the the role often changes um, in terms of what's the most important for you and you have to adapt your skills to a changing situation. The key features. Or, or, or abilities I look for people when we when deciding upon if someone could uh, start uh, a managerial path is for sure communication as Marian mentioned good organization that is most of the, mm -hmm. of the times expressed through good project leading skills so that they can organize an initiative and um, and drive have the ownership um, I would add to that um, something that in Atlassian we have as one of our values, which is be the change you seek. So actually try to have a drive to change things instead of complaining and mm -hmm. to change the situation. Um, and last but not least, um, some something around emotional intelligence and, and empathy. I think understanding people, um, having, if you're having ability to understand people is something um, that I saw if it's missing, it might be a and mm, not a good situation in a leader position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's answer a few questions slash uh, thoughts from chat and we can proceed to the the sweetest part is uh, the onboarding process and how to develop the skills inside your managers. So Nikita replying that thanks for the answers. Uh, for me, the main challenge is to create goals which are measurable have impact contribute to business goals understand business needs for vision and big picture so it's probably what you're talking about um, and goals yeah um, also one comment from victor is that book mentioned by pavel is for your information ah, for your improvement sorry a guide for development and coaching really nice book um, uh, you should you should um, read it so and um Probably it's a quick question, but still uh, worth to mention. So Arindam asking, um, I'm curious to know, being engineering managers, how much technical work do you usually get involved in? Like 20% coding or 20% design? So what do you think, like, which is the golden ratio between those tasks? <laughs> uh, and slash uh, on which level you kind of stop doing hands-on coding or well I, I i doubt that on some vp position you're still coding or or not i am <laughs> my, yes <laughs> well, on, my, on my private on my private pet projects because you know i don't ah. want to put uh, my teams in danger <laughs> anymore <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i used to be really great at coding but uh and, and smart but now I'm, I'm just experienced i have to say yeah <laughs> <laughs> a really nice thing but do you think like um uh should for example level zero or engineering managers in the teams should they have hands-on is it a rule that you should have your hands inside the code or it's it depends what do you think, space answer? for others maybe ah okay yeah michael or pavel yeah, pardon. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so uh, uh, from my uh, perspective, uh, no, they should not uh, like uh, in a setup that like is uh, in ideal for me. They should have uh, partners in each function because, like, in uh, what coding, uh, like in front end, in back end, or, or, or in a full stack approach, or uh, if uh, if you say about like uh, engineering work, what, what about QA work? Should they test something on their own? Uh, there are like d d different functions, QA automation, for example, some, some, something else. So um, it's much better, I guess, to have partners across all of those functions, like technical leads for your team or for, your, I don't know, unit, whatever. 
uh, that uh, will help you with everything. And uh, again, as I said, uh, like first time, <laughs> uh, yeah, managers should be about scaling, not about doing something uh, by hand. So uh, for me, it uh, looks like 100% my management stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, see. Um, I, I would say that I, I wouldn't say there is a golden rule. I have been seeing teams and team leads that have different preferences and different profiles. Um, organizations might, um, because of their complexity and uh, the amount of stuff that uh, team leads need to handle, might kind of enforce that it's a really low percentage or zero percentage for a person to be able to tackle on um, engineering things. Um, and that's probably like for majority of my team needs, uh, the, the responsibilities that they have um, don't allow them to be directly involved into coding. Uh, but I, I also know people in our organization that are very passionate behind it to still keep uh, committing and they have found teams and projects where this is doable and possible. And I have also my friends that are in, in other companies as engineering managers where they explicitly say uh, they expect their team leads to be contributing to the code. So I, I guess no no single rule. It depends on your preferences. Where do you feel best? If you if you feel you need um, this contribution as well, you probably will find the proper team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, thanks, uh, Michal. And uh, probably we should jump into the ac action, not actual topic. Everything we speak before is actual topic. But about uh, kind of onboarding slash development process and management, uh, like in the beginning of the career or in the beginning of management, because um, there are plenty of information in the internet how to become a Java developer or JavaScript or any other technical skill. But actually, it looks like there are no um, silver bullets for being a good manager because there are plenty of um, skills as we spoke before and every company is kind of different so uh, probably a good process should cover this um, situation and Marianne I know that you guys in Muse has uh, uh, some uh, really nice process about that maybe you can share your opinion how to build it or how you're doing that yeah thank you for that so I think like, um, you know, uh, it's uh, very similar to what uh, Michal was saying, uh, having having a very, I would say, similar initiative here in uh, in Atlassian, which is, which is really great. And uh, basically what we what we built is some sort of a, let me share the screen, if I may. Uh, yeah. uh, we have some sort of a, we call it a, a, a team lead growth program, which is designed for, uh, hopefully you can see the screen, which, which yes. is designed for basically uh, the new team lead. And uh, the reason why we created such program is exactly as uh, we were saying here with Pavel, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, when we grow, uh, it's not about the processes that make sure that we survive the growth. It's about the culture and, uh, you know, the, having the right team leads in place and the right leaders in, in place, right? So uh, uh, by this program, which takes for three months, we make sure that uh, the team lead is... Uh, you know, up and ready and set for success uh, in that period of time, uh, as opposed to uh, the very oldish experience, which most of us have, which is like to let you sink or swing for two two years when a manager comes to us and says, you know, let's give it a try. Uh, there is much, not, not much help with, you know, some sort of mentoring or regular coaching. Instead, like, you know, uh, it's up to you to make sure that, you know, your team sort of works to some extent, right? So, so uh, Mariana, could you please make it uh, full screen or uh, a little bit bigger because it's, uh, yeah, for example, you can make the full screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's do it like this uh, and uh, I will do my best to find the full screen button, maybe that's possible. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's one of, one of the, one of the things, uh, enter full screen. Okay, got it uh and as you can see like there, there's a uh, you know multiple levels of uh checks that or let's say uh you know areas that we make sure that each and every team lead understands uh and these let's say areas are split into 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 weeks so physically how it looks i don't want to go too much in detail uh this is this is the program and the, the introduction and uh this is our, our knowledge base and uh each and every person knows like you know what are the specific cards 
uh, what's under the hood, uh, how to prepare yourself, you know, to go through different areas that, that, that you need to know. Again, without going too much into detail, uh, this is the, the program which, which is up and running. Uh, actually, uh, we have it run for currently there are six people, uh, uh, you know, uh, in progress with, with this, this program and it, it seems to be a great success. So uh, this is the high level picture. I don't want to go too much in detail because I want to leave the space for others as well, but I'm happy to, to discuss the details moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, probably a few questions about this scheme. So um, was it hard to to make this assessments points because like for example some skills are uh, probably measurable but some are how do you measure communication or something like that okay so uh again like uh you know that's a good question by the way like what's the definition of success right after you pass this program to me the definition of success is that a uh uh, uh the team lead himself or herself or themselves better better to say uh, uh, are able to keep up, keeping up going with with the brand new team they are, you know, they are managing. So that's that's the best uh, output I can I can say, uh, and that, that is measurable. Although it's binary, uh, it is definitely measurable. Uh, what I'm what I'm trying to say instead of measuring the KPIs here, because I don't think like you know uh, the KPIs are measured uh, within the within the team. That's what you should be focusing on, not on not uh, the or not on the individual level. So the way how we have organized it is that you know we make sure that each and every uh, new team lead uh, who goes under the hood of this program has uh, assigned uh, a specific uh, mentor, which is usually uh, the direct manager or somebody from somebody internal, and they have a specific designated time to go through the variety of these topics, and uh, they have to. Uh, reserve a certain time allocation on a weekly basis to make sure that uh, that person, that new uh, leader, has enough time to go through all the different topics, all the all the new materials that we are uh, getting. That might be like you know uh, several, let's say, uh, courses, several videos, several blog posts, uh, some of our internal blog posts that we do, some of our internal videos that we want to make sure that you know the, the every every person understands. Right. So hopefully I, I answered your question. Yeah 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 um, yeah totally uh, guys i don't know if you want to challenge marian on his schema and saying like you are completely wrong this should be done in a different way uh, i don't want i don't want to challenge just want uh, to ask just out of curiosity uh marian out of your experience is this a three months period enough for guys to start really contributing I, yeah. I mean, it should be for individual contributors, right? But how it works for managers in your case? Uh, right. So uh, let's be honest. The, the three months, sometimes, you know, we, we get to make this sort of uh, interval or period a bit longer because uh, of like, like, like several issues and, uh, you know, the operational stuff. But nevertheless, like to me, the most important thing is that, uh, you know, as I was saying, if you are able to uh, squeeze this, this sort of time and to provide this sort of mentoring and coaching, uh, uh, way forward. Uh, that's already a huge benefit. So, uh, if I may be completely open with you, we might have some several cases or some cases that you know we are running uh, this program for for let's say uh, one or two months more. But that's that's completely fine. The most important thing is that you know it's not a, let's say some sort of a two year sink or swim experience, if I may put it this way. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh... Yeah, Michal, you can, you can. Yeah, maybe to add to that, um, I think we are, uh, at Atlassian, we are, we are approaching it in a pretty similar way. Maybe there are some slight differences. Yeah. I, um, the people that are raising their hand for, uh, for trying to, the managerial path are going through a program. Um, it's also around three months. It also um, involves some pre-recorded sessions, then coaching sessions and exercises. But I think, and after this, during this three months period, they are owning a small stream of work inside the team. So they are not fully managing the full team, but yeah. only after the, their program, they are receiving their, um, their full team um, and start as a, as a manager. Of course, there's, there are exceptions. Some of people uh, joined the program were already being a manager for the team. But I think that's, that's the approach we are taking on a high level. Um, the topics we have is like transition to management, leadership styles, coaching, mentoring, emotional intelligence, 
leading through a team through a change, things like that are being covered. Um, yeah, um, I, I think the, the interesting thing is how to assess the team need after they are already fully responsible for a team, right? After yeah. some time. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, if I may be completely open with with, with uh, all of us here in this forum, uh, this program serves uh, for me definitely a purpose and uh, I see already uh, the, the value added that, that it provides. Uh, there is one one uh, great side effect, which is like uh, exactly if you if you are as Michal was saying, if you if you uh, are already identified some potential uh, leader candidate for for let's say your brand new team, uh, it's much simpler to convince somebody to to take over this challenge when you have this sort of program available. So and uh, yeah. that that's a big big uh, big big safe uh, in 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 this case. And the other thing, of course, like like as you can see at the bottom, there are like monthly checks. So again, it's not something about the KPIs. To me, the definition of success is that basically we are still good with this program. And and um, one of the principles is that the team uh, that's the potential team lead or the new eventual candidate uh, who owns this program and and the progress, meaning like he's uh, if uh, he's uh, he has the right to step down, right? But uh, that's one of the metrics basically. But uh, in my in my opinion, if he's willing like to continue and passes all the things. Uh, then uh, that that's for sure one of the like I would say key metrics, and of course, like you are asking for the feedback in the end uh, coming from the team. That also that is also like one of the crucial things. And exactly as uh, Michal was saying, uh, starting or seeing people who are starting to own some lots of sort of uh, some bigger initiatives, epics, or they are willing to facilitate uh, certain ceremonies. That's a, that's a positive sign that we are going in the right direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pavel, I know that uh, in Rake uh, we have a roadmap. Uh, yeah, kind of. So basically, uh, uh, it's pretty much uh, maybe uh, continuous. Uh, what uh, guys uh, already mentioned. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, yeah can... I'm starting to share the screen. Sorry, uh, Google Chrome for sure requires some. Uh, permission so basically yeah i uh, just wanted to like uh, highlight in our case it, it's mostly about uh, three pillars uh, that we are focusing it's people product and processes i i like i mean in general like uh, everywhere i guess and uh the only thing about this roadmap uh is that uh we uh, somehow distinguish uh, things for internal and external candidates because our internal candidates for sure they yeah. already covered at least one pil pillar about product so they need uh, our support with the processes what a, a manager should do and we have like i, I don't know we have i prepared to I remember i prepared a separate uh spreadsheet for example with i don't know 20 roles of different processes that we have in Reich and what managers should really do and how, how we describe it. And um, also from another th side, we uh, provide them some coaching uh, about people and how they should work with the team. So uh, that's for internal part and for external, maybe guys, you also can elaborate a bit uh, more about that, how you work uh, with external candidates. For us, it's mostly uh, uh, like support them during this first period. Like uh, literally uh, uh, last week, uh, we had a newcomer who <laughs> said that uh, his head is literally twice bigger than normal uh, during our onboarding because like those guys really had uh, how uh, getting so much information like when you're just a developer you're just trying to set up an environment and accomplish your first task but when you are a manager you have to uh, discover everything about this company and uh, like draw a really huge mind uh, mind map for example of what's going on and uh, that's uh, another kind kind of support uh, that we're trying to provide uh, with everyone. So, guys, yeah, I'm I'm really it, it's really interesting for me how we work with external uh, people. If you can uh, talk yeah. about that a bit. Yeah. So speaking about the external hires, uh, as you as you mentioned, Pavel, uh, we are using the very same program for for them as well. Meaning, like you know, we provide them the opportunity to first of all uh join uh, some of the teams uh and uh they start as uh, i would say uh potential engineering uh, you know engineers basically ic's 
and only after they pass this program and uh, the probation period, of course, uh, then then we let's say do the review about like you know how things are going and uh, we make the final decision whether we do the formal you know team lead promotion uh, in in this direction, right? Uh, but of course, as you are saying, like uh, in case of the internal candidates, uh, you know the uh, the process might be much simpler because they already know some of the insights. Uh, so we don't need to spend so much time on uh, on that. But it depends, right? So uh, yeah, uh, as, as Michael was saying, like people uh, have different uh, personalized varieties. So it's it's always very highly individual. <laughs> and uh, so. To to better understand uh, about this uh, kind of like onboarding program uh, for Marian and Michal probably so people uh, who are attending this program they don't have uh, work duties in parallel to this program so it's full time like a job to attend this program or or not not in That's our right. case uh what what i do uh, what, uh is that i'm asking people to uh allocate uh, two days per week for this program right so basically you lower down the basically the the if i may put it like the the throughput of the team right for for making sure that you know there is no conflicts uh, coming up because otherwise like this program would go belly up for sure mm -hmm. i think i think we are using the same so I don't remember yeah. the exact percentage, but we we make sure that the, the load on the person is uh, smaller. Usually during this time, they are managing a, a smaller stream of, war, of work or, or leading it. Um, yeah, it's not always this the case because sometimes the needs are different. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we try to make sure that they have the right capacity to attend it. Of course, it's in, in agreement with their current manager uh, because we are talking about the exist like i think the the whole um, idea to to move into this program is in agreement with their current manager so they they know that they can expect some more capacity from a person yeah mm -hmm. Pavel, do you have the the same or what's uh the reich's case <laughs> yeah i i would say the same like out of my experience for example uh we reduced this capacity by around 30 percent maybe so uh like i, I mean uh, especially in, in past when uh, when this transition was more smooth uh like you, you know a lot of managers became managers uh, after being a scrum master so uh, the very first step uh in this path uh is when a developer or like an engineer developer key whoever uh stand up and uh say that they want uh, to take the scrum master also or we just reduce their uh, capacity uh but they still working in the team on their tasks um and that's pretty much it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there is a good question in the chat from olga so olga is asking what is the motivation for senior engineers to switch to the management path in your experience and this is kind of good question because like if you were a senior engineer for years like it's a definition of being a senior uh, <laughs> with not always years but still sometime what's the motivation to switch to completely different area from your experience um, Michal, yeah i think yeah i can start here so um in, in our case the switch from a senior engineer to an engineer to an engineering manager is a uh, it's not a promotion so like uh, we were we kind of haven't um, on purpose, we are not uh, treating it uh, as like um, trying to push on people that would like to have a promotion, right? Just for the sake of of promotion. So it's a it's a deliberate decision, and I think that the primary motivation is people that have a an experience of like they have felt a bit of experience of making a larger impact that as an individual contributor. And they they sense that it's something that drives them, um, and and I think this this is the I think Pavel mentioned it already, right? So if they have this kind of experience and they sense that it's something for them, they they start thinking about this. Uh, other thing is if you are well organized and doing a, a great communicative, people will also come to you and say like, yeah, haven't you thought about this path? So that might be additional trigger to think about it. Mm -hmm. And Pavel, what is, I know that you come here from, from engineering, from front end. 
And uh, what was your motivation to switch uh, roles? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. It's quite funny. So basically, uh, like uh, as Michal you said, uh, I, I hope I'm the person who is well organized with a systematic uh, view uh, and systematic approach. And uh, I really uh, saw a lot of things that uh, might be improved around me. And uh, I tried to help people around me, help my team. And from some point, I understood that uh, like my current uh, role is just basically that does not allow me to do everything. And I uh, wanted to have more uh, from one hand, more uh, uh, chances to influence on things uh, from another hand, more responsibilities to uh, like, uh, <laughs> again, influence on things. Uh, I, I guess uh, that's about it. But I also, uh, I was thinking about this question, and uh, I remember one of my uh, reports. Uh, they uh, their motivation was uh, lying around uh, having a completely new challenges because uh, switching from work with a code uh, from to work with people and with processes, uh, it's uh, really. Uh, it's mind blowing, and uh, they wanted to have this challenge and uh, try this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And Marian, uh, what what is your vision on uh, like yeah. why senior engineers would switch? Well, I think uh, Michal and Pavel covered uh, it very well by the keyword <laughs> impact, right? So uh, th that was exactly like the the case which I foresee and which which was uh, really like my my internal case, meaning like you know moving from. Uh, developer to team leads to software architect because uh, I just wanted to have a bigger impact but then that that, that was the that, that was an important milestone which where I found out that you know having impact through technology it's it's not that that's such a big deal as having impact through people so that uh, that's the reason why I made that decision okay let's let's start moving through the towards the leadership uh, you know track making sure that I can uh, speak with the right people having the right influence because let's be honest uh, my my personal story was that I got bored after uh, you know uh, implementing yet uh, another uh, you know for loop or report or whatever that is. Uh, everything was possible for me, but uh, after sometimes you get bored out of it. So uh, I quickly understood that in the end of the day, nobody's interested in whether what sort of technology you use. Uh, what is more 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 important is you know how to make sure that you convince people towards uh, making the right decisions or you know basically moving the moving the needle, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And probably, Marian, you are in charge of many broken screens because when you said that technological impact is not a big of a deal, people were starting throwing some heavy <laughs> object into the screen. <laughs> so uh, we're slowly moving to the one hour mark and for online discussion is a big, big of a deal. Probably uh, what we can cover right now is that, yeah, Big onboarding program for manage, management managers is good when it's established and when you have it. But everyone, every company started from something. And if you have nothing for onboarding program, what do you think uh, to kind of revamp it or to name a few the biggest goals slash biggest topics in this kind of program to cover from the beginning? Not like huge onboarding program, but still we should start from something. So, uh, yeah, Marianne, yeah, you can. So, uh, if, if I may, if I may follow up on that, uh, to me, like um, I, I found out that uh, we sort of uh, missed all the time some sort of important details without the program, right? So, I would say the most important building stones, in my opinion, were in the end that you know, first of all, uh, when uh, you join the trajectory of uh, of, uh, of a leader. Uh, uh, usually people start uh, executing, meaning, you know, making sure that the team delivers, etc. But that's not the best strategy. So what we have there is that, first of all, you need to create the relationships, meaning like, you know, making sure that you, you talk with uh, in all the three directions with your manager, with your peers, and uh, having having an outing, which is, you know, legendary with your, with your teammates, right? That's, that's the most important uh, item to, to kick things off. And the second thing, uh, you know, uh, other than, you know, the, the typical thing is that uh, we make sure that uh, the team leads really do understands the, the product strategy and product principles. 
because without it, uh, you know, of course, you might be having your peer as a product manager, but uh, but uh, uh, you might not uh, be able then to make the right decisions uh, within your team. So uh, having explicitly said that, you know, you need to go through, uh, sit with your PM or product, uh, uh, I would say product uh, director, and making sure that you understand the product strategy, which is for two years, uh, you know, time, time landscape, and uh, then the, the roadmap, which is let, let's say one quarter, and uh, to understand like, you know, the reason, the value, uh, and, uh, you know, all, all the details behind, that really is like uh, a huge trigger and uh, essential for people to understand in the end. Yeah. Um, I would like to approach it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just spent uh, some uh, seconds thinking about it. What I would do if I would have to start um, again, um, I guess my advice would be gather a couple of experienced team leads that you have already mm -hmm. and try to figure out what were the, their biggest challenges in the context of the organization and try to figure out some, even a basic first training, basic first session in terms of what are the responsibilities of a team lead inside your organization and treat it as a starting point. Go iteratively, try to start building on the top important things in your organization and you probably will be adding to that as you go. Um, yeah, that's that's the, the thought. And I think we, in my previous company, we, we, we went with this uh, process a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, like a couple of words from me. So basically you guys already just said almost everything. Uh, as I mentioned, we, uh, uh, like we, we target on this three pillars of people, product and processes. So uh, for people, as Marin, you said, it's really uh, crucial to set up all these relationships and uh, make sure you are, you are on board with all pe uh, people with the team. Um, for product, for sure, uh, again, you like uh, you, you'll have to become an expert in your product domain. It's uh, it's not not a case uh, uh, to discuss. And for processes, uh, I guess it's uh, like the maybe uh, small bricks in this onboarding roadmap uh, to share uh, all the knowledge base about what's going uh, around and describe like literally how to approach everything uh, in this new company. Uh, how to approach, I don't know, hi, uh, hiring planning, how to approach quarter planning, how to, uh, how do, do you guys do uh, delivery review or whatever. There are like hundreds of processes in every organization and uh, for every new person, uh, it should be transparent and visible how, uh, how we cook it. So that should be a focus, uh, I, I guess. Uh, and, um, also, uh, like for every uh, onboarding roadmap I have tried to build, uh, one of key uh, things for me is to uh, always try to help in this new newcomer uh, to help them to feel successful after a while, uh, give them um, some quick wins that they will be able to accomplish like within this 30, 60, 90 days. Uh, for example, starting from shadowing someone uh, like their mentor or man manager, uh, up to proposing some improvements after a couple of months, and then up to implementing this first, very first improvements after their three months. I guess that's mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, of course, uh, very important uh, to have a feedback loop, and it should be uh, like more on a positive side than a negative side, because it can lead to the bad results. And looks like, uh, yes, this uh, was, um, if you have, again, any questions, you can post them in chat. There are not so many like questions um, directly connected to the topic. Probably one from uh, Taniel. Sorry if I mispronounced it. So Marian, could you please elaborate about team is working correctly thought? Uh, how would you assess it? Okay, I think that ties down to uh, saying that, you know, uh, uh, the, the KPI or the definition of success of the onboarding program is uh, measured by the team uh, and the team success. So uh, basically the way how we how we measure the, the, the team success, uh, uh, we, we have like, let's say, four basic measures. 
Uh, I don't want to go too much in detail. Every, every each and every company, I guess, has, has some let's say performance indicators of the team. But uh, for us, the most important thing is the roadmap contribution, meaning how much time the team really spends on things that matter the most, meaning to the roadmap, to the OKRs, etc. Versus the, the rest. The other one is uh, Epic's uh, uh, Epic cycle time, meaning like uh, how long all these uh, high level increments are taking you. Uh, of course, in case like imagine the situation that you are working on some, let's say, big level feature for three months, that's something we really want to avoid because you want to uh, deliver this this feature or this epic uh, on an incremental manner, right? The the third thing is the 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 issues uh, uh, cycle time, of course, meaning like the the very simplistic metric because we want to make sure that you know the tickets uh, are are flowing through the system, and uh, the fourth one is the uh, let's 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 call it goal uh, sprint goals completion, making sure that you know uh, each and every team picks one single goal, not three goals, not two goals, one, a single one, and uh, we are measuring whether uh, in the end of the sprint the, the the goal has been achieved or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hopefully I answer this question uh, in a good way. <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully, and I, I believe yes, you do, you did. So. I think that's it. It's a one hour mark, which is in the world of TikToks and 30 second videos is just a huge result. And uh, again, thank you very much, guys, for your contribution, for being here. It was a big pleasure for me, uh, frankly speaking, as uh, yes, from the um, yeah, we have a couple of comments. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, by the way, your feedback is very valuable your i mean uh, viewers because uh, otherwise we were practically blind we don't know where to go so please leave your feedback using this link and it's in the chat and uh, again if you have any thoughts uh, cases you can uh, use this link there are pre plenty of links but all of them they will be in the description and thank you very much for this evening uh, I th hopefully it was a thoughtful uh, discussion. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Michal. And thank Pavel. Thanks, guys. Uh, it was yeah, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> thank you all. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Who knows who's going to be there? So um, please subscribe. You know how this YouTube blogger subscribe, press the button, press everything, and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.